This place where I stand in Chinda Mitiana at the cathedral was the base where three young, courageous and brave young men were conducting their catechism classes after the coming of the first Catholic missionaries to Uganda. The pillars behind me at the cathedral in Chinda Mitiana each represent the three young, courageous and brave young men, Noah Mawagali, Luka Banabachintu and Matthias Mulumba based here to learn and practice their Catholic faith. Later on, the two of them, Luka Banabachintu and Matthias Mulumba, left for Mengo where they found their persecution and ended up being burnt alive in Namugongo. But one of them remained and that is Noah Mawagali who was left tortured and battered at the chapel where the chapel is standing on my left today. He was left on a tree battered, mutilated, and left to die, left for the wild to eat. Today a chapel stands over that place in his honor. We bring you the Uganda Matters celebration 2022, starting it off from here in Chinda Mitiana, under the theme, Baptized, Sent to Witness Christ with Hope and Love, animated by Fort Porto Diocese under Mbarara Ecclesiastical Province. In the name of Father Stephen Lusva, the cathedral administrator in this diocese of Chindamitiana. And here you are, where you are standing uh, is the very place, the site where Noah Mawagali was murdered on, 20, on 31st of May 1886. Uh, yesterday we had a big celebration here with the bishop and the, so many pilgrims, some from Fort Porto, those who are still continuing to Namgongo, those who came from Hoima, Movende and other places. So this place is a place of St. Noah Mawagali in a special way. Noah Mawagali was born in this diocese. Noah Mawagali was born at a place called Nkazebuku, and he was murdered here at Chiyinda. And that very site, the yellow, the yellow tent you see over there, is the place where Noah Mawagali died. We have had so many pilgrims in this diocese for this year, mainly because Fort Porto has prepared and so many people came here on their way to Namugongo. It was a, bit, a big challenge somehow, because we had to look for something to feed them. Somehow we were unprepared, we were caught unaware. We thought at some moment that they are, they are over, only to get more groups and all the like. But apart from St. Noah Mawagali, we have also other two Uganda matters whom we have a relationship in this diocese. Uh, St. Matia Murumba, all the way from Busoga, he used to work here in Mitiana. He had a home at a place called Ibutega, which is not far, about four kilometers from here. Uh, he's also a special saint in our diocese. Then another one is Lukaba Nabachintu, also who had a home, a house, here at Chiyinda. Actually, when the raiders, the raiders came from Kampala looking for the, those who had embraced faith, they found Noah Mawagali preaching in the house of Lukaba Nabachintu. And all of a sudden, when they asked where the, those, where the Christians were, Noah Mawagali came out and he said two to no meaning, here we are. And Noah Mawagali was murdered at this very place, Chiyinda. <laughs> Every year, 
towards 3rd June, thousands and thousands of pilgrims come to Uganda in honor and to make commemorate the Uganda Matters. As you can see, these are pilgrims from Kenya. Sacred relics of, of the Matters of Uganda. They have been kept in this altar, some of them, like some bones of the Uganda Matters. Then, Sigarabia Kaloli Rwanga, Kaloli Charles, Charles Rwanga. Maybe some of the bones were also put in this altar. Um, for no Amawagari, it is just we, got, we just caught part of the tree that was was tied because we didn't get the bones as such. And then Matia Mbuma. So the altar inside there is a holy place, a special place. Hundreds in this very place in Tamu, also known as the Singo County in Mitiana district, raised a little boy, Ambrose Chiwuka, who later became a martyr. We're here to find out more about him and his life, and with me is Father Kanyike Edward Mayanja, who's going to tell us all the details. Father, you're welcome. Thank you very much. Father, tell us um, more about Ambrose Chiwuka and this entire place where he was raised. Yes, Ambrose Chibuka was born to Chisule, that was his father, and Nampera was the mother. They lived here, and in fact, they are buried here. Behind us is the chapel that was built in memory of the martyr Ambrose Chibuka. The father of Ambrose Chibuka, Chisule, was a drum beater of the king. And if you go behind this chapel, you'll find the trees out of which the a, a particular drums of the king that Chisule used to beat were, were hewn. Mm -hmm. Yes, there are some trees are still there. This is why Chibuka himself, as a very young boy, was taken to the capital to be a page in the palace of the king and was given exactly the same work as his father. And at the time of his condemnation to death, he was 18 years and was doing that work. He was instructed mainly by uh, Matia Murumba, another martyr, because he was part of the Christians who were in the palace of King Mwanga. Mm. What happened is that uh, after the death of the proto martyr Joseph, Joseph Mukasavali Kudembe, um, Ambrose Chivuka, together with the Archivist Chuanuka, 
they went by night to Father Lourdel, the very first missionary who came to Uganda together with Brother Amas, and asked for baptism. They were catechumens, they had not yet been baptized, but they knew that any time the king would condemn them to death and kill them. So they asked for baptism. That was in um, 1885. Yes. Now, uh, when Ambrose realized that uh, death was really near, he took a leave from his work in the palace of the king and came to say goodbye to his parents and also his relatives in this very place. They tried to stop him from going back. They tried to, you know, convince him that he was going to die for nothing and so on and so forth. But he adamantly went back after saying goodbye to him and to his parents. And he was one of the 13 martyrs who were burnt alive at Namugongo on the 3rd of June, 1888. Thank you very much, Father. Just to um, maybe calculate the distance for us, how far is Tamu, this area, from the palace where they used to go? How many kilometers were they walking? Yes, now, if I estimate, we are about 10 kilometers from Mitiana. And Mitiana is around 64 kilometers from Kampala. So most probably you can count something like uh, 50 kilometers from here to, uh, to where the palace was. Yes, yes. Thank you very much. Um, that is Father Kanyike Edward Mayanja, and we are going to see the place where the drums, the king's drums were being hewn by Ambrose's father. This is the place uh, where the clan of Ambrose Chibuka is buried, and we're going to see the burial grounds right here in Tamu, Mitiana district. is the special place where the Kabaka's special drum called the Mjaguzo is made out of these trees around us. But Father Kanyike is going to give us the more insight on why particularly these trees from this place. Father. Yeah. The father of the martyr Ambrose Chibuka, Chisule, was a drum beater. And he was from this place. Most probably, he was one of those who were even making this special drum called Mujaguzo. Mujaguzo is a drum that is beaten in the palace of the king to make people know that there is an important, a very important feast in the palace mm. and all the people flock there for the feast. Now, the trees you see here, these are the trees from which Mujaguzo is hewn. Even now, should there be any need, they will come here and cut one of these trees in order to make Mujaguzo. It is in the village of the Mata, and many people around here keep it clean as you see it. And I think there are even some traditional practices that are done here, given that there is, at the foot of this big tree, there are some broken pieces of calabash. It means some people come here for some ceremonies or I don't know. I, I wouldn't call it worship, but, <laughs> but for traditional things and so on and so forth. What I cannot tell is the reason why the drum Mujaguzo is made from trees that grow up here. 
I know, for example, the scepter or that the king usually gives to the Katikiro, who is his prime minister, comes always from a forest in Sese. But that Mujaguzo must be hewn from a tree uh, that is one of these trees. Uh, this I cannot tell. I cannot tell the reason why. Yes, what I know, they, they, it is true that when need be, they come here to collect trees and make. And this is evidence of uh, one of the trees, that maybe the trees that was last cut exactly. for the Mujaguzo many years ago. Yes, and what shows that this place is special is the fact that the rest of the tree was not even taken away for firewood or for other things. Even if it may be very good wood, it was just left to rot here. Yeah, it means that this is a special place. You just don't come here and cut trees from, from it for any use whatsoever. Yes. Thank you very much, Father. This is the homeland or home place of the martyr Ambrose Chibuka. And this place was probably his playground as his father did his business of hewing the special drum of the Kabaka called the Mjaguzo. <laughs> Okay. The keeper of these tombs, uh, she is wife to one of the descendants of the one who is buried here, practically the father of Ambrose. Uh, exactly. uh, the father of the martyr Ambrose Chiboka. The story is like this. Now we have just been up there. How it began to be the place where the drums are taken from. When Chimera, the third king of Buganda, was coming from Bunyoro, he had that drum, Mujaguzo, and that drum would never be put on the ground. So it was put on a tree, kind of movable tree, eh, up in the place where we have been. It was put there. 
and that one became the place of Mujaguzo. This is how it became the place of Mujaguzo. This, the matter Ambrose Chibuka used to go to that place to learn how to play these drums and even other drums. Now, it happened that uh, this Chisule was brother to Kaula, the one, the, the original beater of that drum. And he was the one um, training all the boys in the art. Even up to now, Kaula is there in the palace of the present king, a descendant of these people. Yes. Now, this tomb here is marked by with the cross, but a cross that is inclining. It means that Chisule, father of the matter, was not baptized, but it is his connection to the matter that led to putting the cross on his tomb, but not the way we do the Christians. Yes, it means that if this man was saved, it was by virtue of his son. Yeah, because there are some other people who uh, followed their relative and became Christians, but he died before being baptized and most probably even before being instructed. Yes, and the tombs we see here are tombs of the Pangolin clan or Eskale anteater we call Rugave in, in Luganda. They are the people who take care of the drums of the king. Yes. Very interesting. Yeah. So the father is here and the mother? The mother, I sh should ask this lady to know where she was buried. Kakati nyavu, a mama wo mjulizi yazi yeti yaziki wawa no. Eh, <laughs> Now, the mother of the matter, the place of her burial, is really not known. Because even this Chisule, the father of the matter, was not originally buried here. When uh, Ambrose Chibuka was taken to the palace, eh, there was a kind of dispute because he was the only male or the only male of Chisule who had about for 20 to 30 girls. Mm -hmm. But the only male one. It means that Chisule did not want his son to go to the palace. Teyamanya mm -hmm. did not even know. So, but when he was taken, there was a kind of dispute between the two brothers. Mm. So he went and lived in another village, but his bones were brought and buried here. Yes, yes. The other one who took him to the palace, uh, his aim was to make him great. Because from the pages used to come the chiefs. Okay, so if your son is made page, it means he, his future was bright. But you know, he was a page, but the risk also of being killed by the king is there, was there. And in fact, this one was killed. This was, is what caused the dispute between them. Yes, this lady here is a wife to one, to the, one of the descendants of these people mm -hmm. and even if her husband died she is still here keeping the tombs mm -hmm. but he 
This is the late hus husband of this lady here, descendant of Chisure. In fact, I knew him. Now that I can see him, I realize that I knew him. Because <laughs> it's not very long ago that he died. Yes. Say, Joseph in Namakara, Namuadu, Mugensi, Matia Migadi. This, in fact, is a place of pilgrimage and Okay, in July this year there will be another pilgrimage here. Usually it is after the pilgrimage in Namugongo that people come for pilgrimage here. Yes, and many times the bishop himself comes. Having known where his base was, Matia Mulumba practiced his religion and taught catechism at the cathedral today, Chinda Mitiana. But we have moved further to know where was he living. This is the place and behind me is where his home was built or where he was staying. Currently a chapel stands in his memory. We continue to talk to Father Edward Kanyike Mayanja about his living in this place. Father, tell us more about St. Matia Mulumba, how he was living in this area. St. Matia Mulumba, as he has been mentioned, came to Buganda as a slave with his mother. He was uh, sold to a man called Magato, who was a chief or one of the assistants of the Mukwenda of that time, county chief of Singo. And this Magato treated Mulumba as a son instead of treating him as a slave. In fact, this made him even change his name. His name was Wante Rukududu, which was a name from Busoga, Buna, and he called himself Kalemba. So Kalemba grew up as son of a chief, and he grew up to become a chief himself. A, when the brother of his adopted father took power after his brother, a man called Kabunga, he started a kind of group or association that he named Chirumba after Dumba who was the Mukwenda, his brother. And in charge of that association was Mulumba, was Kalemba. This is how he came to be called the Mulumba, because of belonging to the Chirumba. Now, a, at a certain moment, he himself now became the assistant a uh, Saza chief or county chief of Singo. And he remembered that his adopted father, Magato, once told him that the religion, the traditional religion that was being practiced at that time was in fact not the true one. He told him that white men would come and those are the people who would come with the truth. 
when he saw the Arabs, he thought these were the people that his father spoke about. And he began to follow instructions from the Muslims and in fact became a Muslim. But when the protest stance came, he thought, he saw a difference between the Arabs and the Protestants and left the Muslims for the Protestants. Up to when uh, Father Rudel and Amas came and he changed the third time and became a Catholic. But being a chief, a great chief in Buganda at that time, he had many wives. You could think about 30 in number. And he followed instructions, but he could not be baptized. So at a certain moment, he decided to divorce all those women and remained with only one. This is when he was baptized. And even this baptism was a kind of trial one because Father Rudel, so called Mapera by the people, thought that uh, at a certain moment he would take back his wives. But then he told him one day, saying, Father, don't worry. It has taken me two years to make my decision and I have made the decision. I will be a Catholic, remain a Catholic, and die a Catholic, and follow all the directives and the teachings of the Catholic Church. And this, in fact, is what happened. But how did Mulumba Kalemba come into contact with the Catholics? Now, when the king wanted to build a house for the missionaries, he gave the responsibility to the county chief of Singo. And the county chief gave it the same responsibility to his assistant. So, Matia Murumba was a part of those, or was the one organizing, in fact, the building of the houses of the missionaries. And this is how he came into contact with them. And when he went to them, he told them, I've been following you now for some time, and I've seen that uh, you must be the people my father was speaking about. <laughs> so he ended up, anyway, being baptized. He was baptized. And what this man did, is this that he is the one in fact who organized the evangelization of Buganda. He had three centers one in Bulemezi where Luweru is, one in Masaka that time called Ibudu, and another in the very palace of the king with the pages of the king. He was the one organizing all the instructions. You can imagine a man who was a civil servant and had to fulfill his duties as a civil servant, but at the same time fulfill duties as a catechist. He is one of those, together with uh, Luka Banavachintu and Noah Mawagali, who were in fact under him, they would hear the instructions, get the instructions from the missionaries, and learned by heart what they had learned and then come back to Mitiana to teach those who remained in Mitiana. The same people organized to go to Budu and also to Blemezi to do the same. And this is what Matia Mulumba really did. Now, uh, when the king when now turned against uh, Christians, he found out that uh, Mulumba was really the one organizing the instructions in his very palace. And this infuriated him. His Katikilo, the prime minister, was the first to contact Mulumba, who was known 
as a great chief here in Mitiana, place that was called uh, Chinda or Busimbi. He called him and asked him, are you the one who sent away all your wives and you are encouraging people to, to do the same? Do you think that we who have remained with many wives, we are fools or what? Mulumba answered like this, is it because I'm thin that I have been brought here? Or it is because of the religion that I profess that I have come here? That was his answer. The Katiki was very, very much infuriated. In fact, he's the one who ordered um, Mulumba to be not only tortured, not only killed, but tortured. When he was arrested, uh, he was put together with those who were going to Namugongo to be burnt alive. And when he reached somewhere around old Kampala, he told people, I'm not going to follow death up to Namugongo. If you want to kill me, kill me here. So they took him out of the line and entered the kind of thicket or bush. They cut off his hands, his legs, and carefully tied, you know, the pieces that remain in such a way that blood was still circulating in order to give him a very painful and very slow death. And they left him there like that. Some people who were passing by heard someone crying for water, he was feeling very thirsty, and they followed the voice. When they saw what was there, instead of helping him, they just ran away. What they saw was a terrible spectacle, they just ran away. And so, for most probably two or three days, Mulumba remained there in agony until he followed his master in death. Yeah. So, Father, this uh, this chapel uh, has been is built and was inaugurated in uh, two thousand one yes. on thirtieth May. Yes. Um, in his memory and his honor, it's being expanded. This yes. means this is the very spot his house was seated. Exactly. How long or how far is this place to the cathedral where he was working? From the cathedral where his court was. A court that was serving as a civil court, but at the same time a house of instruction, uh, just where the cathedral is now, is about five kilometers away. Yes. And you'd walk that every day to and from? Yes, a man who would walk to Kampala. <laughs> you can imagine if he wouldn't walk to that place there. I cannot even imagine the shortcut he was taking, but he would walk there and come back. One another thing that is known about Matia Murumba, even if he was a great chief, when he became a Christian, he became so humble that he would, first of all, he sent away all his slaves, he freed them, and also uh, he would carry his own luggage, something that was unbelievable in Buganda at that time, a chief to carry on his head, his own luggage, uh, that was unbelievable. But this is what this man did in his humility. Yes. Well, thank you so much, Father Kanyike. And as you can see, this place where our Mata, St. Matia Mulumba, lived and spent his life, mostly, is a peaceful place and very beautiful. Thank you very much, Father Kanyike, for joining with us in this journey of faith as we trace back the roots of our matters, the three brave young men, St. Noah Mawagali, St. Matia Mulumba, and St. Luke Banabachintu. As it is the theme for this year, baptized to witness Christ with hope and love, it couldn't have been better. We as Ugandans, we are counting our blessings one by one, including our Uganda matters. Yes, sir.